interests and hobbies. It is very rewarding to have different interests and hobbies. Some people like to play computer games. Other people spend a lot of time watching television. There are people who would rather watch movies. Some people prefer more physical things. They would rather play a sport, like baseball, hockey, or basketball. Some people do exercises at a gym, or they just go for walks. There are many ways to exercise. They can ride a bicycle or lift weights. There are people who like to collect things. They can collect all kinds of different things. You can collect stamps, coins, dolls, postcards, movies, rocks, or posters. Some people even collect bugs or leaves. Some people are lucky enough to be able to travel. You can travel to a nearby place, or you can travel far away to a different country. There are people who like to listen to music. People have different tastes in music. Some people like rock music, rap, classical music, or folk music. There are many different types of music. Some people would rather play music than listen to it. You can play an instrument, or you can sing. Many people learn to play the guitar, or the piano. Some people join bands or orchestras. There are people who like to read books. There are a lot of different hobbies. It depends on what you consider to be fun. You can have more than one hobby or interest. It is good to be interested in a lot of different things. Movies. I go to the movies almost every week. Sometimes I rent movies from the video store. My favorite films are action films. I like to watch car chases. I like it when the bad guy has a shootout with the good guys. I like the good guys to win. I also like science fiction movies. I like things that take place in the future. I like movies that have aliens from different planets in them. Some of the science fiction movies can be silly and unbelievable. I don't like those ones. My mother likes dramas. She has a lot of favorite actors and actresses. She sometimes watches sad movies that make her cry. She also likes comedies. She laughs out loud if a comedy is very funny. My father likes horror movies. He likes movies with monsters in them. He also likes thrillers. I have watched some thrillers that keep you tense and on the edge of your seat. Sometimes I have to shut my eyes if the movie gets too scary. My brother likes animated films. In animated films, there are no actors, just cartoon characters. My brother goes to the movies on Saturday afternoons with his friends. He goes to the matinee. He gets popcorn, candy, and pop. He usually comes back with a stomach ache because he eats so much. Sometimes my father watches documentaries. Documentaries are about real things. You can learn a lot from watching a documentary. I watch documentaries with him sometimes, but I would rather see a good action film. Flowers. There are hundreds of different types of flowers. Most people like roses. Roses grow on bushes, and they smell beautiful. You have to be careful that you don't prick your finger on a rose thorn. Roses come in many colors. There are red, pink, yellow, and white roses. In the spring, tulips are in bloom. In Ottawa, there are many tulips. Some people go there just to see all the tulips in the spring. Forget-me-nots are also spring flowers. They are tiny and blue. 
Lilies of the valley look like white bells. Many of the trees have blossoms on them in the springtime. The apple and cherry trees look particularly beautiful when they are in blossom. We have a blossom festival in my town. My neighbors like to plant geraniums, petunias, and marigolds in the summer. Some people plant sunflowers. Sunflowers grow very tall. They have bright yellow petals. All of those flowers grow best in the sunshine. If your garden is shady, you have to plant different things. Hostas grow well in a shady garden. Chrysanthemums are fall flowers. Chrysanthemums come in many colors also. There are purple, yellow, and white chrysanthemums. Flowers are good to give as gifts. Women like to receive a dozen roses on Valentine's Day. Carnations also make a nice gift. They have a very sweet smell. Many people give away lilies for Easter. Poinsettias are very festive at Christmas time. If someone goes to a dance, they often give their partner a flower to wear. Sometimes a girl will get an orchid from her date. If you go to a wedding, you will probably see a lot of flowers there. Flowers help to make places beautiful. The shopping mall. There are many different stores in the shopping mall. There are ladies' wear stores. They sell dresses, blouses, and many kinds of clothes for women. In the men's wear stores, there are suits, ties, shirts, and slacks. There are also clothing stores that appeal just to teenagers. Some clothing stores only sell children's clothes. There is even a store that sells bathing suits and cover-ups for the beach or pool. There are lingerie stores that sell ladies' underwear and nightwear. There are hardware stores that sell tools. There are shoe stores. You buy shoes and boots in a shoe store. There are book stores. You can buy a book on almost any topic at the bookstore. There are stores that sell compact discs. Those stores also have tapes and videos. There are sports stores that sell special shoes and clothes for sports. They also sell sports equipment and T-shirts and hats with the logo of your favorite teams. There are gift stores that sell all kinds of things that someone might want for their house. There are kitchen stores where you can buy utensils and pots and pans. Those kinds of stores also sell aprons and napkins and anything you might need for your kitchen. There is a movie theater at the mall. There is a jewelry store that has a lot of gold and silver jewelry. There is a hairdresser in the mall. Sometimes I go in there to get my hair cut. There are fast food places in the mall. You can get a quick lunch like a hamburger or some French fries. There are also fancier restaurants in the mall. You can sit down for a nice meal. There is a furniture store in the mall. You can buy a new sofa or bed at the furniture store. There are bulk food stores. At a bulk food store, all the foods are in bins. You take as much as you want and pay for it at the counter. There is even a telephone store, and an electronic store at the mall. My brother's favorite store is the toy store. He could spend hours in there. There are also department stores at the mall. Department stores sell all kinds of things. They sell perfume, clothes, shoes. Kitchen utensils, or just about anything you might need. You can get almost anything you want at the shopping mall. Travel. It is fun to take a trip to a faraway place. My brother just went to Italy and France. 
he got on a plane at Toronto Airport. He took a flight to France. He stayed there for a couple of days. He visited the Eiffel Tower. He was in Paris. He said that he enjoyed the food in France. He then traveled to Italy. He saw many towns and villages in Italy. He went to Rome and visited many of the tourist attractions. In Venice, he saw the canals. He tried to speak Italian, but he is not too good at it. He said that the people were very helpful. They tried to understand him. He bought souvenirs for us when he was in Italy. He ate Italian food. He said that pizza in Italy is quite different from the pizza we eat here in Canada. He saw many streets that were made of cobblestones. He saw many old buildings. A lot of people in Italy travel around on scooters. He stayed at a very nice hotel in Italy. He was sorry when it was time to come home. My brother likes to travel. He likes to fly in airplanes. The airlines lost his luggage once. He was not too pleased about that. Next year, he would like to travel to England. Hot and cold. I notice that whenever it is summer, people complain about the heat. But whenever it is winter, people complain about the cold. It seems that people are never satisfied. I don't like the winter. It is usually much too cold for me. My teeth chatter, and my fingers turn numb whenever the weather gets cold. It is hard for me to warm up once I start to freeze. I try to wear layers of clothes, but winter winds go through my clothes no matter how much I wear. My feet feel like they are blocks of ice on a cold January day when I walk home from school. I would not like to live in a place that had cold climate all year long. I am not comfortable when it is too cold. I like the summer. Some people say that it is hot and sticky in the summer, but I don't mind the heat at all. I love to feel the warm sunshine on my skin. I like the freedom of not having to wear heavy coats and boots. I am the happiest when there is a slightly cool breeze that comes along to refresh you on a hot summer day. I could live in a place with a hot climate. I would enjoy that. Of course, when you are in a place with a hot climate, there are more bugs than in places with cooler climates. I don't care for bugs. Where I live, it is very humid. The heat and moisture combine to make it uncomfortable sometimes. It is nicer when the heat is high, but the humidity is low. It would be better if I lived somewhere where it was hot, but not humid. That would be just perfect. Walk a mile in my shoes. Have you ever heard the saying, walk a mile in my shoes? I think it's a very good saying. Do you know what it means? It means that before you judge someone, you should put yourself in his or her position. For example, if someone was running in a race and they did very poorly and came in last, it wouldn't be fair to say, oh, he's just a terrible runner you would have to look at all the circumstances that made the person lose the race. Maybe they pulled a muscle in their leg the day before. Maybe this is their very first race. Maybe they are not in good form because something isn't right in their lives. There can be so many things that affect a person's life, performance, and moods. If someone was very quiet at a party, you couldn't just assume that they weren't friendly. You don't know what is happening in their lives. They could be feeling ill, or they might have just had a bad experience. Nobody can know exactly how another person feels. Even if someone tells you what he or she is experiencing, you still won't fully understand what is going on inside the other person. Everyone perceives and feels things differently. To walk a mile in someone else's shoes is to try and understand things from that person's perspective. We are all shaped by the events that have taken place in our lives. No two people have gone through the exact same things. So, 
before you are quick to judge someone, stop and think about what it is that they might have gone through. You won't always understand why people do what they do, but you can try to understand and put yourself in their position. Joking. Joking is good. Jokes can be very funny. Jokes can also be hurtful. Jokes can be tasteless too. It is not an easy thing to find jokes that do not offend anyone. Some jokes make fun of different races. Those jokes are not funny. They are hurtful. It is not right to tell racist jokes. Many jokes use bad language or are about questionable subject matter. These jokes are also not acceptable. Many people are highly offended by rude jokes. What some people find funny, others will not. Comedy is a very personal thing. Some people like slapstick comedy. That is the kind of comedy that the Three Stooges use. Some people like very subtle humor. Some people will laugh at just about anything. Sometimes it is not appropriate to laugh, but you feel like laughing anyway. Did you ever see anyone fall down? Did you feel like laughing when they fell down? You were probably worried that they had hurt themselves, yet the way that they fell was so funny that you felt like laughing. It's not funny when someone falls. But you can't help but laugh, even though you try to hide it. Jokes and comedy differ from culture to culture. Many people from other countries come here and don't understand our comedy. Jokes and comedies are often geared toward our environment. Sometimes comedians make fun of the things that we do in our day-to-day -day lives, like going to the bank or going grocery shopping. We can all relate to that. Being a comedian is not an easy job. Telling jokes and making people laugh is extremely difficult. Jokes are fun, and they are funny if they are good. Jokes can get you into a lot of trouble if they are inappropriate, and sometimes they're just not funny and nobody laughs. Here's a joke: Why does the cow wear a bell? Because its horns don't work. Do you get it? Do you think it is funny? Well, maybe it's not that funny. I told you that it was difficult being a comedian. Divorce. Mary's parents just got a divorce. Mary is very upset. She thinks that her parents don't love her anymore. She thinks that they got a divorce because of her. She is wrong. Her parents love her just as much as they always did. They aren't getting divorced because of Mary. Sometimes marriages just don't work out. It isn't really anyone's fault. Marriage isn't easy. It is hard for two people to stay together for a lifetime. Sometimes people change as they get older and they move on. Some people have perfectly good marriages and they stay together for their entire lives. Divorce doesn't happen because the parents don't love the children anymore. A lot of children feel that it is their fault, but it isn't their fault at all. Children neither cause the divorce nor can they prevent it. It is up to the parents. Divorce isn't the end of the world. Children can still see both parents and stay with them. Life goes on. Sometimes children can get new stepmothers or stepfathers. That can be a good thing. You just have to be understanding and know that your parents still love you. Life doesn't always go the way that we planned it, but it has its twists and turns. Life is an adventure. If your parents get a divorce, just be understanding. Know that they love you and that this is a hard time for them. It is a hard time for you too, but these things have a way of working themselves out in the end. If my fish could talk, I have a goldfish. He swims around in his bowl all day. He looks bored. I look inside the bowl and watch him. His mouth always moves. He looks like he is talking. I imagine what my goldfish would say if he really could talk. I think he would say, "Hey, I'm bored in this little bowl. Why don't you get me a bigger tank with more fish in it? I would like to have some friends to swim around with." I went out and bought a bigger tank for my goldfish. I put some plants at the bottom of the tank, and I got a miniature deep sea diver to put at the bottom of the tank. I looked into the tank and imagined what my goldfish was saying. He seemed to be saying, "This is a nice tank. It's roomy in here, and you decorated it well. But I still don't have any friends to swim with." 
I went to the pet store and bought three more goldfish. I put them into the tank. All of the goldfish seemed to look at each other. They swam near each other and seemed to be playing games. I knew which one was my goldfish because he has a black spot on his fin. I looked at him and imagined that he was talking again. He said, "This is great. I have a big new home and friends to swim with. These are nice goldfish that you brought home for me. Thank you." Goldfish can't really talk. I know that. I just like to pretend that my goldfish talks. He seems very happy now with his nice new home and his new friends. I don't think goldfish can smile either, but it looks like my goldfish has a smile on his face. How to avoid catching a cold? How many colds do you catch in a year? Most of my friends catch quite a few colds. They cough, sniffle, and sneeze. They carry around tissues and blow their noses all the time. Their eyes water, and they have scratchy throats. I don't get many colds. In fact, I can go for a whole year and never catch a cold. This is why I consider myself an expert on how not to catch a cold. I'll tell you how to avoid catching a cold. I think that you need to take a lot of vitamin C. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I drink fruit juice too. I also take vitamin C pills. Whenever I begin to feel a cold coming on, I make sure that I have taken my vitamin C pill and I drink a lot of orange juice. That usually knocks the cold right out of my system. I make sure that I get a lot of fresh air. In the winter, a lot of buildings are shut up tight so that the air is stale and people's germs circulate through the buildings. I get outside and breathe in fresh, clean air. If somebody is rude enough to cough or sneeze right in front of me without covering his or her mouth, I just hold my breath for a second. I'm not sure if this works or not, but I don't want to breathe in anybody's cold germs. Many germs are passed through hands. It is important to wash your hands thoroughly if you touch anything in a public place. If I hold a banister while I'm walking down the stairs, I think of all the people who have used that banister, and I make sure that I wash my hands before I eat. Doorknobs also have a lot of germs on them. Money is another thing that is passed from hand to hand and is covered with germs. Sometimes I see people stick money into their mouths. Just think of all the germs that you would be putting into your mouth if you did that. If you just give it a little bit of thought, you can avoid a lot of germs that cause colds. If you eat good food and stay fit, your body will be able to fight off the germs that causes colds and other diseases. It is not always possible to avoid colds, but if you do catch a cold, drink plenty of fluids and get a lot of rest. The future. I sometimes wonder what life will be like in the future. Life has changed so much in just the past few years. I'm sure that there are still big changes that are coming. Do you think we'll still drive cars? Maybe we'll get into computerized vehicles that we won't have to drive. We'll just push a few buttons, and the vehicles will take us to wherever we have to go. Maybe there won't be roads. We might just fly through space to get where we want to go. Instead of telephones, we'll just use our computers. We'll be able to see each other when we talk. That type of thing is already happening. Maybe we won't have to cook our meals. We might be able to push buttons to order whatever we want. A nice roast beef dinner or an ice cream sundae might just pop out of a machine. Would be nice to have a robot to clean the house for you. In the past few years, computers have been extremely important. People used to write to each other through the mail. Now people communicate so much more frequently through email. Most of my friends own computers. If we had all of these things to do the work for us, what would we do? We would still need people to program the computers. We could spend more time being creative rather than doing everyday chores. The future holds many surprises. I'm sure that technology will become even more and more amazing. When my parents were young, they had never even seen a color television. Nobody owned a computer. It doesn't take long for things to change a lot. Who knows what amazing things are in store for us? Giving a speech. I had to give a speech last week. I gave a speech to 300 people. I had to speak in front of a group of students. I had to tell them about a campaign that we were having to raise money for cancer research. Giving a speech can be a difficult thing. When you stand in front of a big crowd, you can get very nervous. Some people feel like they have weak knees. Their legs feel as if they are made of rubber. Their heart beats very hard inside of their chest. Their palms get sweaty. Some people even become short of breath. For some people, giving a speech is their worst fear. 
When you give a speech, everyone is looking at you. They are waiting to hear what you have to say. When you have 300 people looking at you, you have 600 eyes that are on you. It is a little frightening when you think of it that way. Before I give a speech, I take three big breaths. I calm myself and I remind myself that what I have to say is important. I like to be sure of what I am going to say, so I practice my speech in front of a mirror at home. I like to look like I am relaxed and friendly. They say that practice makes perfect. So the more speeches that you give, the better you will become at it. Whenever I have to give a speech, I imagine that the audience is just one big person. I look out into the audience until I find a friendly, smiling face. I focus on that person and I pretend that I am just talking to them. I have become used to giving speeches. I am more relaxed now than I used to be. People tell me that I do not look nervous at all. I like to hear that. Sometimes I do feel a little flutter of nervousness, but I just ignore it and do the best that I can. Giving a speech is not as scary as it appears to be. Anyone can do it with a little practice. Moving to another country. My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life, and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so we had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes, in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I loved that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll, no matter how worn out she is. I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. I am curious. I am curious about many things. I would like to find the answers to a lot of questions that I have. What holds the stars up in the sky? Why does ice form on the top of the lake when it is cold? Is there life on other planets? Why do we not fall off the face of the earth? 
How do caterpillars turn into butterflies? All of these things are mysteries to me. There are so many questions that are unanswered. I think I should go to the library and get a book to find out why people grow old. What makes a television work? I also want to know where electricity comes from. Who is the strongest person in the world? Who is the smartest person in the world? Why do some people have blonde hair and some people have black hair? Why do people in different countries speak different languages? Why do people have to die? Why are no two snowflakes alike? What makes people fall in love? What makes the rivers run? Why does the sun rise every morning? How did the oceans form? Why did the dinosaurs vanish from the earth? I wonder if I'll ever find out the answers to all of my questions. I think I'll have to study hard and stay in school to find out everything that I want to know. Some questions never get answered. It is good to be curious. People who are curious about things are the ones who learn a lot, and some curious people go on to invent things and make important discoveries. Jazz. One of the most popular forms of music is known as jazz. Each year, hundreds of thousands of people attend jazz concerts and festivals in cities around the world. Jazz music, both old and new, is played on the radio and on home stereos. Two of the most important features of jazz music are improvisation and syncopation. Improvisation means that music is created spontaneously by the musician during a performance. In other words, the musician modifies some existing music in a new and interesting way. Syncopation means that the regular patterns found in music may be broken up, with new accents and uneven patterns being created. The features of improvisation and syncopation are difficult to use with skill and require great creativity on the part of the musician. Jazz music originated in the southern United States during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It was based on African American music that was derived in part from rhythms in Western Africa. The earliest jazz musicians were influenced by a music style known as ragtime, which was popular during the late 19th century. Jazz music also incorporated some aspects of a related kind of music called the blues. By the beginning of the 20th century, a fully developed form of jazz was being played in New Orleans, a city in the southern United States. Jazz musicians played instruments such as the trumpet, saxophone, cornet, and piano. Jazz soon became popular and was played on the riverboats that traveled along the Mississippi River. Some jazz musicians moved north to the city of Chicago, and young musicians in that city developed some new forms of jazz music. By the 1920s and 1930s, jazz was popular in many parts of the United States, and some musicians began forming large bands comprising many musicians and many different instruments. This began the period known as the Big Band Era, when a popular form of jazz known as swing music was played. During the 1940s and 1950s, other forms of jazz known as bop and cool jazz were developed. Some people preferred these newer kinds of jazz, but others preferred the older varieties. By the 1960s, some jazz musicians began to experiment with different kinds of musical instruments and with other kinds of music. Some musicians incorporated musical styles from other parts of the world, or combined jazz with rock music. And today, some musicians have blended jazz with rap music. However, some people prefer the more traditional forms of jazz music. Of course, most of the great jazz musicians of the early 20th century, people such as Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Dizzy Gillespie, and Billie Holiday, are no longer alive. However, many great jazz musicians are still active, and many younger musicians have continued this form of music. People will continue to enjoy jazz music for a long time to come. Australia people. The first people who lived in Australia were known as the Aborigines. 
The Aborigines came to Australia by boat more than 40,000 years ago. They are the first people in the world who are known to have used boats for transportation. Even though many parts of Australia were very inhospitable places, the Aborigines survived. They lived by hunting and gathering throughout the continent, even in the desert areas where survival is almost impossible. The Aborigines felt a deep spiritual attachment to the land, and they made many beautiful paintings upon the rocks of many parts of the country. Their most famous invention is a curved hunting stick known as the boomerang. The design of the boomerang is remarkable because it can be thrown in such a way that it will turn around and return to the person who threw it. Until about 200 years ago, the Aborigines had only a very limited amount of contact with people in the outside world. The next people to migrate to Australia were from the British Isles. Beginning in the late 18th century, Australia was used as a prison colony, where common criminals and political prisoners were sent from Britain. By the middle of the 19th century, many British people moved to Australia voluntarily to begin farms or to search for gold. By the late 19th century, Britain stopped sending its prisoners to Australia, but migration continued. After the arrival of the British colonists, the Aboriginal population declined sharply. This was partly due to disease, partly due to cruel treatment by settlers, and partly due to the loss of their traditional way of life. Today, the Aboriginal population is growing again, and the Australian government has taken some steps to correct the injustices of the past. The various parts of Australia were governed at first as separate colonies, but in 1901 they joined to form a single country. Australia continued to grow during the 20th century, and after World War II, it attracted many immigrants from countries in Europe. During the past few decades, many people have moved to Australia from various parts of Asia and from other parts of the world. Today, Australia consists of one territory, the Northern Territory, and six states: Western Australia, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland. Tasmania is a small island off the southern coast, and Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland are found in the eastern part of the country. The two largest cities in Australia are Sydney and Melbourne, both of which are in the southeastern part of the country. Sydney has a beautiful harbour that is one of the largest in the world, and Melbourne has many beautiful parks and gardens. The capital city of the country is Canberra, which is located between Sydney and Melbourne. Other large cities in Australia are Brisbane in the northeast, Perth in the southwest, and Adelaide in the south. George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver is possibly the most famous agricultural scientist of all time. He invented hundreds of products that could be made from crops such as peanuts and sweet potatoes, and he changed the methods of farming in the southern United States. The story of George Washington Carver's life is interesting and inspiring, as it shows how some people can achieve success despite adversity. George Washington Carver was born in a small town in the American state of Missouri in 1864 or 1865. He was named after the first president of the United States. George's parents were slaves. His father was killed in an accident, and his mother was kidnapped and later died. George and his brother were raised by a married couple, the Carvers, who had owned George's mother. George was often sick during his childhood, but he showed an intense interest in nature. The Carvers taught George to read and write, and he became known locally as an expert on plants. Later, the Carvers sent George to a school for African American children in a nearby town. After his graduation, George Washington Carver continued his education in the state of Iowa. While a student in Iowa, Carver had very little money and had to work at many jobs to afford the costs of his education. However, his knowledge of plants was very impressive, and after receiving his master's degree, he became a teacher at the college he had attended as a student. Soon, however, Carver moved south to the state of Alabama, where he worked as a teacher and researcher at a college for African American students. 
It was here that Carver stayed for the rest of his life, and it was here that he performed his important agricultural research. One problem for farmers in the southern United States was that the most widespread crops, cotton and tobacco, tended to remove nutrients from the soil. Carver realized that this problem could be solved to some extent by rotating the cotton and tobacco crops with other kinds of crops, such as peanuts and sweet potatoes, which could help to preserve the nutrients in the soil. Carver's discoveries made the peanut, the sweet potato, and the soybean very useful to southern farmers. He invented the food product known as peanut butter, plus hundreds of other products. For example, Carver found ways to produce plastics, ink, cooking oil, paints, and cosmetics from peanuts and other crops. Carver also developed a new variety of cotton. Carver received many awards for his scientific research, but he was never interested in fame or fortune. When Carver died in 1943, the American government made his birthplace a national monument. Today, Carver is still known as a great agricultural scientist. The rights of the accused. In English-speaking countries, the rights of an accused person are taken very seriously. Over many centuries, laws evolved in such a way that people could not be arrested or charged without a very good reason. Of course, every country needs to enforce its laws. This means that police officers are needed, and so are prosecutors, the lawyers whose job is to make criminal charges against people who break the laws and to prove that those charges are true. However, it is very important that people's freedoms are not taken away wrongly. People should not be punished unfairly, and people who are accused of crimes must have the opportunity to defend themselves. In some parts of the world, people can be arrested and imprisoned for long periods of time without any criminal charges being made against them. One of the most important principles of justice in English-speaking countries is that a person cannot be held by the police unless that person is charged with a crime. This principle is known by the Latin term habeas corpus. According to the idea of habeas corpus, the police are not allowed to detain a person for more than a certain period of time, usually 24 hours, unless some charge is made against the person. A judge will order the release of a person who is not charged with a crime. Another important feature of justice systems in most English-speaking countries is that accused individuals have the right to be represented by a lawyer. Most accused people want to hire an expert lawyer. However, even if a person cannot afford to hire a lawyer, the criminal court must provide a lawyer who will represent that person. The lawyer for an accused person is required to defend that person as thoroughly as possible. One of the most important aspects of justice systems in the United States and the British Commonwealth is that an accused person must be fully informed of any charges made against them. Also, any evidence that will be used to show the accused person's guilt must be shared with the accused person and with that person's lawyer. In this way, accused persons can challenge the truth of any evidence that will be used against them. Similarly, any person who acts as a witness against an accused person can be cross-examined by the accused person's lawyer. This means that the statements of a witness can be challenged by the accused person. Another important element of most English-speaking justice systems is that evidence must be obtained fairly. Police officers cannot simply enter a person's home to look for evidence of a crime. They must first have a good reason to believe that a crime has been committed, and they must obtain permission from a judge to enter the person's property. This permission is called a search warrant. Because search warrants are required, people are free from arbitrary invasions of their property by police. Finally, another important aspect of most English-speaking justice systems is that trials must be held in public, where other citizens can watch the trial. An accused person is not tried secretly. Moreover, as discussed in another passage, the accused person has the right to be tried by a jury of other free citizens. All of these rules ensure that order can be maintained without taking away the freedom of innocent people. 
New York City is the largest city in the United States and one of the largest cities in the world. The city of New York has a population of over seven million people, and the surrounding urban areas bring the total to about twenty million people. However, New York City is not merely a very large city; it is also known as one of the world's leading centers of financial, artistic, and media activities. Compared with most of the great cities of the world, New York is very young. The first permanent settlements were established during the 17th century by settlers from the Netherlands. Those people named their town New Amsterdam. Soon, the colony was taken over by English settlers who renamed the city New York. New York grew quickly, and by the 19th century, it was the largest city of the United States. New York was usually the place where new immigrants to the United States would arrive. In the 19th century, immigrants from Germany and Ireland were numerous in New York. In the early 20th century, New York City was the home of many Jewish immigrants and also immigrants from Italy. In addition, many African American people arrived in New York from other parts of the United States, and many persons came to New York from the American territory of Puerto Rico, a Spanish-speaking island in the Caribbean. In more recent decades, immigrants have arrived in New York from places all over the world. One of the most famous features of New York City is its dramatic skyline. New York has more tall buildings called skyscrapers than any other city in the world. Many of the tallest and most interesting buildings in New York, including the Woolworth Building, the Chrysler Building, and the Empire State Building, were constructed during the early decades of the 20th century. In addition to these impressive buildings, New York is also known for the huge bridges that join the island of Manhattan to the surrounding areas. The Brooklyn Bridge is the most famous of these remarkable and old bridges. Of course, New York is famous for much more than just its architecture. New York City's financial district, Wall Street, and its theater district, centered on Broadway, are the most important in the United States. Central Park is one of the world's great urban parks, and the art galleries, museums, and concert halls are among the greatest to be found anywhere. The United Nations has its headquarters in New York City. People around the world recognize the famous Statue of Liberty, which stands on an island in the harbor of New York, and the bustling Times Square, located in the Midtown Manhattan area. Visitors to New York find it to be an extremely busy, fast-paced city, and are struck by the extremes of wealth and poverty that surround it. Many people love New York City, but even those who would not want to live in New York do agree that it is a very interesting place. California. By far, the most populous state of the United States is California. Located in the southwestern corner of the United States, California is home to a great diversity of natural environments and cultural influences. In the year 2000, over 33 million people lived in California. California's many mountains and valleys produce a wide variety of climates and natural regions. In the interior, southeastern parts of the state are many areas of desert. For example, Death Valley, which is so deep that it is below sea level, is extremely dry. Temperatures in Death Valley sometimes exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Other valleys are more pleasant and hospitable places. In the Central Valley, many farms grow vast amounts of fruits and vegetables. California also contains many tall, snow-covered mountains. On the slopes of some mountains are forests that have very large trees. Some of the giant redwood trees of California reach heights of 100 meters or more. Many of the cities in California have Spanish names. This is because many of those cities began as religious missions that were started by Spanish priests. Mexico owned California during the early 19th century, but few Mexican people lived there. The United States gained control of California during the 1840s, and the discovery of gold brought many Americans and others to California. Today, California contains some of the largest cities in the United States. Within the Greater Los Angeles area, one can find Hollywood, known as the movie capital of the world. 
Many rich people live in suburbs such as Beverly Hills, and many poor people live in other neighborhoods throughout the city. The Los Angeles area is home to over 15 million people, many of whom have immigrated to the United States from Mexico and from many Asian countries. Los Angeles is a very large city that has spread across a great area. As a consequence, the city has many traffic jams, and air pollution or smog is sometimes a problem. Further north is the city of San Francisco, one of the most beautiful cities of the United States. The image of the Golden Gate Bridge, which crosses the harbor of San Francisco, is famous around the world. Also famous are the hilly streets of San Francisco and the trolley cars that provide transportation along them. San Francisco's Chinese community is one of the largest in North America, and the city also contains a vibrant artistic and cultural life. San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake in 1906 and was damaged again in 1989. California has always had a special place in the imagination of Americans. This is hardly surprising, given the variety and diversity of this vast state. Scotland. Scotland is the country that is located on the northern part of the island of Great Britain. The Scottish people are one of the four main nationalities of the British Isles, together with the English, the Welsh, and the Irish. Scotland and its people have played an important part in the history of the English-speaking world. Scotland can be roughly divided into two main regions. The lowland areas in the southern part of Scotland contain most of the population and the two main cities, Edinburgh and Glasgow. Most of Scotland's agriculture and industry are located in the lowland areas. The highland areas, together with the islands that lie off the coast of Scotland, are not so heavily populated. The lakes and mountains of the highlands are known for their beautiful scenery. One of the main themes of Scottish history is conflict with England. During the Middle Ages, the English and Scottish kings were often at war. Around the year 1300, the Scots repelled some invasions from England. During the 1600s, though, Scotland and England had the same king, and the countries were officially joined as the United Kingdom in 1701. For people in the Highlands of Scotland, the 18th century was very difficult. Most people worked as farmers on land that was owned by a few wealthy landlords. The landlords decided that they could make more money on the land if they evicted the farmers. So many of the farmers were forced to leave. The Highlanders rebelled against the king in 1745, but they were defeated. During the 18th and 19th centuries, many people left the Highlands of Scotland. They moved to the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. During the 19th century, Scotland was the first country to have universal public education for children. The country produced a great number of famous scientists and inventors during that time. Scotland is famous for its national costume. This costume includes the kilt, which is a knee-length skirt worn by both men and women. The kilt is made from a fabric that contains stripes of different colors and widths, which cross over each other to produce a pattern that is called a tartan. In the Scottish Highlands, groups of related families called clans have their own unique tartan. Another famous part of Scottish heritage is the musical instrument known as the bagpipes. The bagpipes have a distinctive sound that is easily recognized. Bagpipes were originally played to intimidate enemies in battle, but today Scottish people play the bagpipes at parades and other celebrations. People of Scottish heritage around the world celebrate their heritage on January 25th of each year. This day celebrates the birthday of Robbie Burns, the famous Scottish poet. People celebrate this day at parties where people eat a famous Scottish food called haggis. Today, Scotland remains part of the United Kingdom, but some Scottish people would like Scotland to become independent. Whatever the Scottish people decide, their country will remain a unique and interesting place. London. The city of London is one of the most famous cities in the world. In previous centuries, London was the center of the British Empire. Today, it is one of the most important cities of the emerging European Union. London is located in southeastern England on the Thames River. The Greater London area contains about 12 million people, and the surrounding areas contain several million more. London was the first city in the modern world to have reached a population of one million people. 
London is a very old city, and many of its neighborhoods maintain their distinct character. One of the most famous parts of London is the East End, where people speak with an accent known as Cockney. One of the features of the Cockney accent is that the letter H is often not pronounced. London's population is very cosmopolitan. The city contains, in addition to people of English background, large communities of South Asian, Chinese, African, and Caribbean people. Most of these people have their origins in countries that belong to the British Commonwealth of Nations. Many of the most famous buildings in London are located in a small central area. This area contains several huge churches, including Westminster Abbey, where many famous people are buried. Another famous church is St Paul's Cathedral, which was rebuilt after the original was destroyed by fire in the year 1665. The Houses of Parliament are also found in central London. These buildings are famous for their Gothic architecture and for the sound of the large clock known as Big Ben. The Tower of London, which was formerly used as a prison, is now a popular tourist attraction. Buckingham Palace, the residence of the royal family, was first opened for public viewing during the 1990s. London is also famous for its many impressive museums, art galleries, and theaters. For example, the British Museum contains priceless objects from all parts of the world. The National Gallery holds a great collection of artistic masterpieces. The Globe Theatre has been rebuilt to appear as it did during the time of Shakespeare. Despite its age, London remains a vibrant and busy city. Most of the cultural and financial institutions in England are located in London, and the city attracts many young people from other parts of England and around the world. Of course, London is popular with tourists who come to see the many attractions of the city. Soccer. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world. The basic rules of the sport are simple: two teams of 11 players try to kick the soccer ball into the opposing team's goal. Only one player on each team. The goalkeeper is allowed to touch the ball with hands or arms. Perhaps part of the reason for the popularity of soccer is its simplicity. The game requires no expensive equipment, merely a ball and a playing surface, preferably a large grassy area. For children in most parts of the world, soccer is the sport that is played most widely. Soccer is also known as football, especially in England. However, soccer should not be confused with American football, Australian rules football, and rugby football, which are very different sports. Although the basic rules of soccer are easy to learn, it is very difficult to master the skills of the game. The best soccer players have developed through natural talent and hard work a remarkable ability to control the soccer ball with their feet, knees, torso, and head. They can pass the ball very accurately or shoot the ball very hard. The most famous soccer tournament is the World Cup. Every four years, teams representing countries from around the world play in a tournament to decide which country has the best soccer team in the world. Because soccer is such a popular sport, it is not possible for every country in the world to be represented at the World Cup tournament. To decide which countries may participate in the World Cup, it is necessary to have tournaments within various regions of the world. The countries that perform well within their parts of the world can then proceed to the World Cup. In the past, most of the available places at the World Cup have been reserved for teams from Europe and from South America. The reason for this is that soccer has been extremely popular in these continents, which have produced the winning teams in previous World Cup tournaments. Recently, however, several African and Asian countries have played quite well at the World Cup, so there are now additional places provided for teams from Africa and Asia. Someday, teams from these areas will win the World Cup. However, there will no doubt be strong competition from countries that have traditionally had very strong teams, such as Argentina, England, Brazil, France, Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. In many parts of the world, soccer has been an increasingly popular sport for women. There are now many soccer leagues and tournaments available for women athletes, and it seems likely that the number of women who play soccer will someday equal the number of men who play soccer. Among children in many parts of the world, soccer is equally popular for boys and girls. Extinctions. Ever since human beings appeared on the earth, we have had a serious impact on other living things. One of the most serious results of the human presence has been the extinction of other species. Since the arrival of humans, many species of animals and plants have died out as a result of human activity. The extinction of species is a serious problem. 
When certain species are eliminated, this may disrupt the balance of nature, leading to overpopulation of some species and extinction of others. These changes may have an impact on humans. Also, some of the species that become extinct might have had benefits for human beings. For example, scientists believe that some of the plants growing in rainforest areas might be valuable for treating human diseases. If these plants become extinct as a result of human activity, then these treatments will never be found. The earliest extinctions caused by humans occurred very long ago. Modern humans emerged in Africa over 100,000 years ago, and some of those people migrated to other parts of the world. When they reached new areas, they found that it was very easy to hunt the large animals, which had not previously been hunted by humans. As these prehistoric people moved into Europe, Australia, and the Americas, they killed large numbers of large animals. Within a few hundred years, many species of animals had become extinct. For example, prehistoric people reached New Zealand less than 1,000 years ago, but they soon hunted a huge bird called the giant moa to extinction. With the beginnings of modern technology several hundred years ago, many other species were driven to extinction. Hunters armed with guns were able to kill vast numbers of animals. In North America, this led to the extinction of bird species such as the passenger pigeon, which had previously been very numerous. Other species were nearly wiped out, such as the large prairie mammals called bison. There were once millions of these animals, but now only a few thousand remain. Today, many more species of animals and plants are going extinct. Sometimes this happens because of human expansion into areas that are the habitat of certain species. When people clear a forest, some species may be lost. In the near future, many other extinctions are possible or likely. In some cases, the problem is due to human greed. For example, some people buy ivory that is taken from the bodies of animals such as elephants or rhinoceros. Hunters sometimes kill these animals simply to take their ivory, and the result is a tragic decline in populations. Another example involves bears in North America. Some people buy the sexual organs of these animals for use as aphrodisiacs or sexual stimulants. The result is that hunters kill bears simply to obtain these organs, and this leads to a reduction in the number of bears. Fortunately, many countries have laws to prevent the hunting of species that are facing extinction, known as endangered species. However, some hunting of these endangered animals continues. Only by refusing to buy the products that are made from endangered species can we prevent this terrible crime.